My name is uh, Joris Oldenziel. I work for SOMO, Center for Research on Multinational Corporations in the Netherlands. We are a small uh, research institute and we're also uh, the coordinators of a big uh, network uh, of about uh, 90 uh, civil society organizations worldwide and it's called OECD Watch and we're specifically uh, critically watching the uh, implementation of the OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises. This is a set of recommendations from the OECD governments to uh, their multinational enterprises with, with regards to uh, re responsible business conduct basically outlining a whole range of uh, issues that companies uh, are expected to, uh, to adhere to. And uh, we as OECD Watch uh, critically monitor if companies are following that and uh, to what extent uh, governments are um, seriously uh, about uh, making sure that uh, their companies adhere to them. And um, one of the key issues uh, at the moment is that these guidelines are going to be reviewed in uh, 2010. And uh, we as OCD Watch have been quite involved in, uh, um, yeah, in seeing how companies uh, have been uh, implementing them, uh, them and how governments have uh, used them in all their uh, different policies and also in, in their own uh, implementation of these guidelines. So we are very uh, interested to see if we can get some uh, improvements uh, done in the, in the review now in 2010 because uh, our experience in the last uh, eight to ten years has been uh, slightly disappointing in terms of uh, to what extent governments really take it seriously, especially when it comes to uh, handling of uh, specific uh, cases, because the OCD guidelines has a um, implementation procedure attached to it, which means that uh, OCD governments have to set up a national contact point, which is then uh, responsible for promoting the guidelines, but also for um, receiving and handling complaints uh, if uh, parties such as trade unions or NGOs feel that um, certain companies have uh, breached the guidelines. So uh, many of the NGOs that, uh, that are part of our network have uh, tested and tried this uh, sort of complaints mechanism and um, up to now the experience is not so good. Uh, a couple of cases have been uh, raised uh, um, yeah, have had some good results, but uh, in many cases the uh, national contact points, those, uh, those bodies that sort of uh, have to handle the cases, um, have not taken it too seriously and uh, many uh, cases have been re rejected or uh, have been lingering on for way too many years and um, companies have basically been able to, to get away with, um, with the alleged uh, violations that uh, NGOs and trade unions have detected. So we really want to see uh, some improvement, some strengthening of that mechanism, especially in terms of giving these uh, national contact points a little bit more um, mandate, a little bit more teeth to make sure that uh, companies are really pressured and uh, uh, to take this instrument seriously. And if they do fail to comply with them or adhere to them, that there's also some mechanism to uh, um, yeah, to make sure they will do that in the future. So, for example, to put some sanctions or to put some incentives uh, in terms of public procurement or exclusion from export credit agents, uh, things like that. And how much are the guidelines actually used? I mean, how many cases do we see being brought? Uh, well, the NGOs are using it uh, in terms of uh, raising cases when it comes to uh, violations and there's about uh, 100 uh, cases since uh, 2000, which was the first time that NGOs were able to file cases, and another about 100 from trade unions. So, I mean, compared to all the cases and issues out there and violations that we know about, it's not used that much, but that's also because they're so disappointing outcomes uh, so far. And it's, it's a little less clear actually uh, to what extent companies are using them because nobody is monitoring that or keeping track of that. So it's basically up to us or up to other research institutes or something to, to look which companies are actually publicly uh, endorsing these guidelines and actually integrating them into their own CSR policies and practices. Mm. Um, uh, if you look at the major companies that are pretty involved in CSR and you look at their their CSR policies and their doc codes of conduct and stuff, you could see that most of the elements in the OCD guidelines are also part of their codes of conduct. So in that sense, I mean, these are quite 
uh, well accepted and generally accepted standards and principles. So you could see uh, a lot uh, coming back in, in other codes and standards, private codes, etc. Um, but there's no sort of overall monitoring of uh, the take up of these guidelines by, uh, by companies uh, uh, on a worldwide uh, scale. And it's uh, different from, for example, the Global Compact, which really requires companies to sign up to them. Hmm. Uh, it's a voluntary uh, set of recommendations from governments to business. So it's really up to some businesses that publicly announce uh, we endorse these guidelines. Other than that, it's, it's difficult to assess to what extent they're uh, fully uh, integrated. So do we need these guidelines or should companies just be following uh, all the hundreds of other codes that are out there? Uh, well, we think uh, we do need them. Uh, we as OCD Watch uh, um, are looking at this set, this set of guidelines uh, specifically because we think it's, uh, it has some unique elements and one of the major unique elements is that it is government endorsed and uh, therefore it really uh, outlines the government expectations uh, of what is uh, responsible business conduct and of course that, uh, that complaint mechanism attached to it and it has the, the sort of uh, semi-judicial uh, uh, element to it because governments have to handle the cases and then come up with a statement uh, about uh, whether or not the company has been in breach of the guidelines. So it's that sort of formal, formal element that makes it uh, uh, quite an important instrument and also because it's a very broadly accepted uh, set of principles which covers a lot of areas. So it's not just labor rights or just human rights or environment. It includes taxation, it includes corruption, consumer interest. Okay. So in that sense, we still think it's, uh, it's a valuable instrument, but it hasn't uh, quite reached its uh, full potential. Thanks very much.